Hey everybody, this is Defense Mechanism. Um, you can see my video looks a little bit different today because um, I am going to be showing you how to use Retroplug, uh, which is a Game Boy emulator that runs in your DAW. Um, a couple of caveats before we get started. Uh, one is that currently there's only a Windows build. So um, I know the developer has a Mac OS build planned and um, if anybody out there is a Mac developer who is willing to uh, kind of maybe help with that build process, um, I'll leave a link below where you can contact the developer. Um, but other than that, um, there may be a few bugs. So that's another thing to keep in mind is I wouldn't necessarily recommend, uh, you know, creating anything that you're not willing to lose. Um, but for opening existing projects and even for adding Game Boy uh, into a DAW project, this is like, in my humble opinion, the way to go. Um, I basically stopped recording from hardware once this became uh, <laughs> basically stable enough to use. Um, it runs using the same boy emulator, which is um, pretty incredibly accurate. So, um, I guess to start off with, um, I'll post a link to the releases page for the most uh, recent release. You want to go to this page here and just download. There's a standalone, so um, you can run this uh, just by itself. Um, but what I would uh, recommend if you, for using an DAW is the VST version. So you want to download this, extract it to your VST folder, and then uh, go ahead and open up your DAW. I'm using Reaper, um, but it also works in Ableton or FL Studio, Renoise, um, and others. So I'll go ahead and add this into the project. I have a couple of versions, but I know this one is the most recent version. So you'll get this um, double click to load a ROM. And I think you can also drag and drop um, a ROM file. And if the ROM has a save file, it should load up automatically. So we'll go ahead and drag in this. I've got my little FM. Um, there are a couple things that you can also investigate. So if you right click on this, it'll show uh, this little menu. Um, you Retroplug has its own um, project format, which is like .rplug or something like that. Um, but it will save anything that you've done in your DAW project. So you don't necessarily need to save it, but this is handy if you're working in the standalone and then you want to load it into your DAW. Um, we've got some different save options, SRAM or save state, um, including the ROM in the project itself. Um, you've got your layouts, you've got your zoom level, so you can increase this, um, audio routing, MIDI routing, and so on. Um, you've got your system, you can load ROM, reset, load save, load save state. And we've got our settings. So there are a couple of different um, key maps by default, but you can also open the settings folder and there's like a JSON file. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So I'm gonna load up my um, keyboard configuration, which is a little bit weird. Um, I, I use A for A and B for B on the keyboard, and then uh, shift for select and enter is actually mapped to start. Normally I would have it on the space bar, but space bar is uh, play for Reaper. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cancel out a little FM and the save file that was associated with this ROM is already loaded. So, you know, if I wanted to, I could just go ahead and play here. So that's working great. But what I, do, uh, what I wanna do is I wanna have this sync to the DAW so that when I press, you know, start here and play at the DAW, it's gonna play my Game Boy track. So firstly, I'm gonna set the tempo to match the BPM of what's in this file, which is 129. And then I'm gonna come up here and set the sync to MIDI. So Retroplug actually emulates the Arduino Boy uh, MIDI. Um, so you can come down here to the LSDJ menu and choose sync. So you've got MIDI sync, you've got Arduino Boy MIDI, and then you've got MIDI map mode. And there's um, more, um, explanations on this um, on the actual like readme file for Retroplug. So if you want to know more about that, you can check that out. Um, I'm just going to use the basic MIDI sync here. Um, 
you can also do some some kit swapping and some other things in LSDJ. Um, you can load up the songs that are in the current project. Um, you can replace. You can export your kits. Um, you can export the ROM or upgrade the ROM. Um, so so now when I you know press play in the DAW, uh, it doesn't do anything, and that's because we need to start LSDJ, and by just pressing enter here. It's going to wait. And now when I press play in the DAW. The tempo is a little off and I'm pretty sure it's because I need to, to set this to the direct sound output. Um, so that's kind of a bummer <laughs> that I can't show that in this video. But the timing is a little strange because I, I don't have ASIO input. Um, routing out from here into OBS. So you'll probably just have to take my word for it that this does actually sync up properly. Um, but and, so that's the first thing and you're basically you're ready to go. If you wanted to route MIDI into this, you can do that um, by doing a MIDI send into this track. Um, but what I'm gonna show you next is how to uh, record four channels separately. So by default, this, uh, basically bounces everything from this Game Boy into a stereo mix like you would get from the output of a Game Boy normally. And Retroplug doesn't natively output um, eight tracks, um, like four stereo tracks just from one instance. But the way to do this um, would be to duplicate the instance. So you've got four instances and then you can solo one channel on each instance um, and record those out. So the way to do that is, let's see, first we want to change our out audio routing from stereo mix down to two channels per system. And you can see here in Reaper, we've got two out of eight outs. So I'm just going to open this up, set this track inputs to eight, and now it's going to map, you know, a stereo pair of channels for each system. So now that when we go in here and click duplicate, um, wherever that is, um, it's under add system, here it is, under project. Duplicate selected, so now we can just do this. Add system, duplicate selected, system, or project, add system, duplicate selected. So now I've got one instance per channel, and I can come in here and just solo pulse one, come over here, solo pulse two, come over here, solo the wave channel, oops and come over here and solo the noise channel. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create three new tracks and I'm going to label these pulse one, pulse two, pulse three, haha <laughs> just kidding, wave and noise. I mean, You could label them whatever you want but it is nice to be able to keep track of them. And then we could even label this one retro plug. And we're gonna create a send track from retro plug to each of these other four tracks. So this one we're sending one and two. This one will send three and four stereo source. This one will send five and six. And this one we can't see right now, so we're gonna send, oops. One more send over here. Gonna send seven and eight here. So now, when I hit play. Uh, we've got one uh, channel per channel, per track. So. Then another thing you can do is render. You can actually just come over here and hit render and d render the output. Um, you know, set the source to select the tracks and then you can select, you'll have to know the duration of your song um, because this will just go forever. So you do need to hit a time selection, which I don't have anything selected right here, but you can actually just render this and it will take, um, it will go a little bit faster than actually just playing the song. Of course, you could bounce these, like you could just 
hit record and record the raw output. But if you render it, it'll go at about, uh, on my computer, it's about one and a half times faster than, you know, the whole song. And then you've got each channel isolated. So that's kind of my workflow for how I set this up to um, bounce my tracks down to be able to mix each channel separately. Um, the really nice thing about it is that it will sync to your DAW. So um, if you've used an emulator like BGB before, BGB has that automatic channel splitting, which is great. And it's really good. If you don't care about syncing this to your DAW or to be able to you know, click on a bar line uh, and have it line up, then it really doesn't matter. You, you know, go ahead and use that workflow. But um, I found that it's a lot easier if you plan to do any kind of mixing or editing um, to be able to to import the tracks and just kind of you know mindlessly click on a bar line and split the track and maybe you know put it on a different um, on a different track here to add some different effects or process it differently or maybe change the volume of certain sections. It just allows a lot more control uh, to be able to do it this way. So um, if you do try it out, let me know what you think. Um, I hope this was helpful. I'm going to do another video on RetroPlug um, as well. Maybe a couple more. If you've got any questions, uh, let me know and I'll try to answer them. Uh, if you like this video, click like and subscribe. Um, feel free to support me on Patreon. Links are in the description. And um, happy tracking.